let us all share our dreams. Do you know the beauty that Pakistan has or the potential that we have, the resources we have or the strength we have? Let us talk something positive for a change. They say a picture speaks a thousand words. We have a beautiful coastline, 650 miles. I do not know how many of you from Lahore had an opportunity to explore all of it, unexplored virgin territory. The sixth largest desert in the world and the largest fertile desert, Sir Parker, almost 365 days of sunshine. The fort that you see out there, it almost equals the Great Wall of China. It is the second largest wall in the world, the port of Rani Khor. How many of you have even seen or heard of it? Roughly 2000 miles of rivers, river Indus that we all know of, that flows from the total length of the country. We also have along with this river, one of the largest irrigation systems of the world. Our agriculture, which is the backbone of our economy, is dependent on river Indus. And the civilization, the languages that we speak, the history that we have, is all dependent on Indus. The word Indus, the word India comes from the word Indus, Hindu. Hindu and Hindu were the two old civilizations. So, we technically is one of the oldest civilizations in this part of the world and I will come to that also. The mangroves, seventh largest mangroves in the world, 300,000 acres, one of the richest ecosystems that we have, shrimps, fishes, folklore, an area of land that is yet untapped, unexploited, just like our desert, just like the coastline that we talked of. Biodiversity, another important strength that we have. From the coast, which is at sea level, to peak as high as 28,000 feet. From the rivers, to the mangroves, to the deserts, we have over 6,000 different species of plants of herbal plants, a 60 billion dollar industry, an area again that we have not tapped into, that we have not exploited. Well, the beautiful mountains, I am sure most of you have seen that. The majestic K2, the second highest peak in the world, over 28,000 feet, the most difficult mountain in the world to climb, more difficult than Everest. We have about eight peaks that are over 25,000 feet, 24,000 feet, all in the region of the three largest mountain ranges of the world, the Himalayas, the Karakorams and the Hindu Kush. That is the beauty that we have in Pakistan. Look at the resources, a country that is rich in natural resources. We now read about Rikodak, we have read about Sandak, the third largest gold deposits in the world, still not explored, still not mined. We have gold and copper that is worth over 1.2 trillion dollars. That is the type of potential we have just in these two ores. So this is a country that is rich with mines, mineral resources still and potential area that we have not yet exploited into and explored. And very important area, yes we saw the electric power go out, we think we are energy deficient. I have written a lot on energy deficiency. We are actually an energy rich country. Just look at the Heidel which uh, brings one of the largest uh, contributions to electric power. We still have potential to generate more than 40,000 megawatts that is twice as much as what we currently have in the country by putting up dams small and large and flow of the river dams. Coal of course, again we talk of coal, 175 billion tons, billion tons 
of unexplored lignite, the largest coal deposits in the world, technically called the Saudi Arabia of coal, that can generate enough energy. It can generate 100,000 megawatts for 300 years. That is the potential we have in coal. Coal that can be converted into gas, coal that can be converted into diesel, and coal, of course, that can be burnt directly to produce electric power. We think we have gas shortage. We still have potential of over 40 billion cubic feet of gas, which is trapped in shale rock. By the way, most of the Canadian gas is shale rock and what is known as tight gas. Again, an area that has not been exploited, that has not been explored. We would rather import gas from Central Asia, from Iran, just like we like to import our furnace oil and our gasoline products from outside rather than make it locally. And I show windmills here. The south of Pakistan, Sin, has huge potential. It has a wind belt. And we can easily generate another 50,000 megawatts using windmill. Do you know India today is generating over 10,000 megawatts using wind? Almost three-fourths of what we generate in Pakistan totally, completely, the whole electricity. China does 44,000 megawatts, three times our total power production of Pakistan. And I can just go on and on. That's a potential we also have here. And when I talked of Thar Parker, I said almost 365 days of sunshine, the potential of solar. I'm an electrical engineer. Solar was never feasible. But in the last two years, let me tell you, the, power, the price of solar panels has gone down by less than 50%. Today, solar electric power is more feasible than by gas and oil. A country like Germany, which hardly sees any days of sunshine, is generating 40,000 megawatts using solar today. And India plans to reach to 20,000 megawatts, which again is what we are currently producing all over Pakistan by 2020. These are the potentials that we have in Pakistan. The, res the natural resources, the strength, the minerals. And if you look at some of the developed countries that we have, if you look at South Korea, you look at Japan, you look at Singapore, we, we gave these examples of Hong Kong, a large number of European countries. None of these countries, none of them, have the type of natural resources we do. The rivers, the coastline, the natural resources, the sun, the deserts, the biodiversity, the energy. I mean, look at what we have versus what they have. And yet, we are amongst the least developed and the poorest country in the world. The history, the strategic location, we see the follower, the spillover of this location even today. Over ages, over 5,000, over 10,000 years, we are at the crossroad of Central Asia, South Asia, West Asia. Civilizations have passed through it. They continue to do. We offer the shortest route from Central Asia to the warm waters of the Arabian Sea, from the east to the west, an extremely strategic location. We have prospered because of the Silk Road in the past, and if we exploit this even today, we can continue to prosper because of our strategic location that we currently have. And as a result of this Silk Road, we have a very strong civilization, like I talked of the Indus Valley civilization, was also built up along the river, we have a history that goes back 7000 BC at Mehrgar. Everybody knows of Monjidaro and the Indus Valley Civilization. Uh, Gandhara, the oldest university in the world at Texela. And then, of course, the recent history that we have currently have, post-Islamic, extremely rich heritage that this country has. We are a proud nation. But the biggest strength that we have Again, because of the location, because of the heritage, is our demography. The diversity that we have in our people. People from all walks of life. And the biggest strength that we have in our demography, first of all, the seventh largest nation in the world, 180 million strong. I call that another natural resource. Exactly like all the resources we talked about, untapped, unexploited just like coal, just like gas, just like wind. Half the population is below 18 years of age. 
an extremely important potential that we have in this country that today is not in the western world, it is not in the developed world, it is not in US, Europe and elsewhere. And because of that, we have strong human capital. Just to give you a few examples, this is not a complete picture, but people that live today, we have great scientists, of course we also had Dr. Abdul Salam, uh, great philanthropists, great sports people and of course we have had people like Imran Khan also in the past and uh, poets like Alama Iqbal, so the list goes on and on from history out to the present time. I have only shown people who are currently active in their fields. And beyond this, when we talk of the youth, we have great youth potential. Here are some of the examples of our international celebrities that we have in the youth. And again, just a few examples that I have put on a slide here. And let me also honor here Arfa Kareem, who should also have been there. And when I started preparing this slide, she was there on this picture. But I only wanted to put in people, because we talk of the dream. People who will take us forward, people who are living. So we have great youth potential in this country. So you see the potential, you see the strength, you see the resources, what have we done about it? How can we exploit it to our advantage? And that is where I come down, how can we exploit our demography? How can we ex exploit our youth? And here is an evidence of how other people have done it. This is called knowledge economy. And to give you examples, the countries out at the top, South Korea and Pakistan out at the bottom. And this curve literally means the more you invest in education, the more you invest in higher education, you see returns in the form of knowledge economy. A clear example, a very linear curve that you see here, South Korea has densities of enrollment or of graduation which are 10 times that of Pakistan and their GDP per capita is 10 times more. Country, other Muslim countries that have invested similarly, like Malaysia, and Turkey, four to six times more enrollment densities and graduates that we currently have in Pakistan, their GDPs per capita are four to six times more. We fall at the bottom half. A clear evidence that countries have prosperity through education, through the creation of a knowledge economy. But one can go even beyond. Here is yet another example of value addition. But countries that have innovation, Countries that do research, countries that have PhDs, the high end part. And there you are looking at Scandinavian countries, you are looking at Europe, you are looking at North America. People that have really invested, that do a lot of research, are out at the far end. This other portion was out here that I talked about, the developing countries. So that's the evidence. To give you an example of Finland, a which has a population less than half that of Karachi, and only one company from Finland, Nokia, has exports more than all of Pakistan put together. That's value addition. So what are we doing about it? Our goal, of course, is, and my dream is, to establish knowledge hubs in Pakistan. That is the right direction. And this gives you an example of what we currently have, how we have prospered. And yes, we are going in the correct direction. We have a lot of setbacks that we talk about, but I, like I said, I'm not going to be talking about anything uh, negative here. We, our goal is to have more and more education, higher education, graduates in the country, create more knowledge workers. And here is a clear proof what the Higher Education Commission in Pakistan has done over years. We continue to grow at a rate of about 15 to 20 percent a year, currently having more than a million students enrolled at our universities and we continue to grow. That is at the impact that we currently have and it is starting to make a difference. Value addition. Just look at the curve, how th things have started changing. These are the number of PhD graduates that we have. We are starting to, re we have reached a takeoff point in research. We have reached a takeoff point in value addition. We only had one PhD graduate in 1947. In 2002, we had 200 PhDs per year. Currently, in the last year, we produced more than 1,000 PhD graduates in one year. Now you see an exponential increase in numbers. It's takeoff, as you see, when a plane takes off from a runway. We have taken off. 
and you are going to see bigger numbers come in the next couple of years as we continue with the type of things that we are currently doing. And where is the evidence? These are just graduates. These are just bodies that have been produced. But where is the evidence of creating new knowledge? Here is the evidence of what we have come out of Pakistan. From as low as 800 research publications, and I'm talking about publications, international publications that have an impact. From 800, currently we are almost at 5,000, an eight times increase. We are amongst the fastest growing country in terms of creating new knowledge, of course, at a lower level than a lot of other countries. We have almost, uh, this is a 2010 data. I think last year we had almost 6,000. We are still trying to compile the numbers together for 2011. And it's not just an increase in numbers, but we are trying to take back our share from the world. So we have already taken back from going up three times more our share of world research has gone up 300% in the last few years. And this figure is only till 2009, because we have to compile a lot of world figures. Now I believe the numbers could be 500% that we have taken back our share. So yes, we are moving forward. We are doing our bit. And that is what I believe is what our dream should be like, is through knowledge economy, through value addition, through creating knowledge workers, and all of that is going to lead towards what we would call a better Pakistan. And we are starting to come visible. We are starting to come on the horizon. We are coming on the world scene. A couple of years back, there was no university in Pakistan that could be identified as world's best. Today, we have at least two. And inshallah, in 2012, I'm almost sure you would see maybe five universities that are above the horizon and that are visible on the world scene. So that's my dream. My dream is for a prosperous Pakistan through what I would call as knowledge economy, through education, through higher education, through the creation of research, education, and innovation. Thank you very much.